I am ready to cast on all the things. Hello, my name is Emily Crow from Crochet Creations and welcome to my YouTube channel. I love to talk about all things yarny. Crochet, knitting, yarn acquisitions, podcasts, yarn vlogs, yarn adjacent things. So if any of that is something you're interested in, I'd love for you to stick around. Today is episode 34 of the Crochet and Knitting Podcast. You may hear my voice. I am a little bit under the weather. I am now on the tail end of things, so I'm feeling much better. No longer hopped up on all sorts of Tylenol and decongestant and whatnot. So I am filming today. I have tissues and I have my water, so I'm sure I'll be taking plenty of breaks to kind of get reoriented and like ready to film some more. So you may see some editing for that because I'm sure you do not want to hear me blowing my nose, but I think I'm feeling pretty good. So I'm excited to get filming and get sharing what I've been working on. I don't have any news per se for crochet creations. Just kind of relaxing. The past few months have been really busy with my Shark Bite socks pattern release and designing and all of that. So I'm just kind of taking it easy and doing whatever suits my whims at the moment. No news, let's just move on into finished objects. It's been about a month since I have last filmed my podcast. It is August. 11th today so yeah just about a month and I do have a few finished objects to share with you I've not been knitting nearly as much as other months but it's just felt really busy with work and also taking a break from designing and stuff just taking a breather and taking it easy it's been really nice to just sit back and just be casually working on projects but I do have some fun things to share with you I finally finished my perfectionist trap if I can get it oriented so I can share with you. Ta-da! Look at that. Ah! Mmm, it smells so good because I washed it in some nice wool wash. Here you go. A little close-up, you can see that texture. It is a garter stitch shawl with these slip stitch vertical striping in it. Ta-da! I used Camber's Cozy Creations in the color Unicorn Dreams 2.0, and I did alternate skeins. Let's see if I can find which side I did that on. I did it on this side, and I kind of created a pattern in which I made sure to lay the strands in the same orientation every time I was switching. So I would like put one strand off to the side and bring the next strand up around. And I did that same orientation every single time I switched my colors, which was every other row. Uh, it is worked in rows. And so yeah, every other row, when I got to the start of this row, I would switch. And I think having the same consistent way that I swapped the skeins made it have like a nice border. Definitely not the same look as just slipping a stitch, but I think it looks pretty good. So I'm happy with how that turned out. And I really do think that I needed to alternate skeins. My neighbor is mowing their lawn. I do really think I needed to alternate skeins with how variegated this colorway is. And I think it turned out amazing. Like it looks really good. I did a lot the last time. I wish I'd marked it out. Let's see, I think this is the top because it's worked in like a triangle where you increase on this side. I don't know where I was, but I was pretty close to the end actually. I just did a few more inches, I think. Oh, you can see one of my ends. I need to trim a little bit there. But I just went until I finished off my skeins of yarn. I got two skeins and it wasn't exactly the amount that the pattern called for, but I figured the way the pattern was designed, I could just go until my skeins were done and then it would probably be long enough just because it was pretty close to what the final yardage count was supposed to be. And yes, I can attest to that. And so that was really nice. I did have to like tank back two rows because I realized I did not have enough to do this I-cord edging. I, I'm not super familiar with I-cord edgings, so I didn't know how much yarn I would need. And I realized when I looked it up, you need like 13 times the amount of the distance you're going is the estimate that I read, which was way more than I was anticipating. So I had to rip back and start over and it worked out just fine. 
So I don't think I even kept my little ball because it was so tiny, just a few yards left. Like I did really great on my yarn management. I was really happy to have this done. So because it's knit in this orientation, you actually rotate it to be able to wear it. And it's got a good wingspan. It's about as big as my wingspan. It's not a huge shawl, but it's a good size. <laughs> Super cute, love these colors. I'm definitely a purple, pink, pastel kind of girly as I'm wearing black, but <laughs> it means the purple, pink, and pastel have a good canvas on which to shine, right? So I'm really happy that that is done. It was a really nice, simple project to work on, but I was starting to feel like I just needed to finish it. And so I just hammered through it the past week or so, got it done, so happy with that. I also finished a lot of socks this past month. We'll start with the first one that was almost done by the time I showed you on the last podcast. Ta-da! This is the Stripes for Days pattern, Cuff Down by Carly Perrins, I think. Northwoods Knit Co. I tested this pattern for her and I used Kimber's Cozy Creations in the Fresh Bouquet sock set that was I think February's mystery sock club thing. Anyway, so I use that. These two minis don't have names, but there's some beautiful, like a dark mauvey rose and a beautiful mint color. I really enjoyed working up this pattern. It was the perfect amount of just a little bit more than vanilla knitting. I got to use up this sock set and it worked up so, so fast. I think I told you in the last podcast the first sock worked up in like two days at the beach and the second sock was super fast as well. I got both socks done before the two week deadline for the pattern test. So that was really nice to have them finished. They are a little bit tall <laughs> compared to what I normally like to wear. And I did do some edits to the pattern just to make my leg not quite as tall because this is already a pretty tall leg for me and the pattern called for even more stripe repeats and I was not gonna wear it if it was that tall. So I did shorten the leg a little bit and I think I shortened this section like by one stripe each, I think. I can't quite remember. It's been like a month <laughs> since I finished these socks, but I did make some edits and if you wanna learn more about that, you can just check out my previous podcast because in there I gave you more details about exactly what I did. I also did this like garter ridge rib that's an add-on that's included within the pattern to make it a little bit more interesting. This pattern is a vanilla plus socks pattern bundle by Carly. And so she had created these three patterns toe up because that's her preferred method. And then people have been wanting the cuff down version. So she finally got around to doing the cuff down version and it included a handful of add-ons so that you could add to your vanilla plus socks. So super fun, a great way to try out some color work, some striping, some fading, things like that. So you can just have a little bit extra besides your basic vanilla. All right, the next socks that I made were my Desert Fabric socks for July. And ooh, the emotional journey with these socks. So this is the Pick Some Peppers colorway. So different colors of peppers that you might find in your garden, which is super fun. And I bought this saying, envisioning that I would have some cute peppers in our garden to like take a photo with. And of course our garden has totally failed because we spent like two days on it and that's it because it's been a it's been a summer. And we're still figuring stuff out with our house. Garden fail, but let me know down below if you also have a garden fail this year. And also tell me if you have had a successful garden because I would love to hear the happy stories too but I decided to make these socks. It seemed like a perfect summer colorway. I actually did a variation of the blueberry waffle socks pattern that I did just a few months ago. It is a DK weight sock pattern. And what I did instead was I just made it on my stitch count for my finger and weight socks. I did do a 60 stitch count sock and because it wasn't a multiple of eight, the two by two ribbing that I did was like off center just a little bit. So I don't know if you can see, but that makes it mirrored so that just along the gusset, you've got knits right there along the gusset edge and same thing right there. It's like completely mirrored. It's not off center at all, which is actually really nice. That appeases my 
sensibilities. I really enjoyed working on this sock pattern. It was really fun. I like the texture with a 60 stitch count sock. I'm trying that out and I think that I've really liked how that fits my foot as a whole. I also did a fish lips kiss heel and this mini is called, I think it's like charcoal or black or something. I don't know. I didn't quite get it perfectly lined up so you can see there's a little bit of orange, like a little blip of it on the other side of the heel and I honestly don't care enough. So it is just fine and it is too hot to wear these socks so I have not had a chance to really wear them and trial them out at this 60 stitch count but they are very comfortable to wear and so that's what I've been starting to do is a 60 stitch count sock when I have the choice. I'm really happy with those. The emotional journey though, let me share. I finished these a few days before the end of the month all fine and dandy, took my picture, it was just fine. And then I worked that weekend and I was working nights, so even worse. So I don't know if you've ever worked nights, but it's so hard to know what day it is, what date it is, like it all just blurs together and it's just really hard to keep track. And I missed the deadline for the DVD Sock Club. I was so, so sad. So if you don't know the DVD Sock Club, you use a skein of DVD sock yarn every single month to make socks, mittens, you could do a hat even, and you submit it on a Ravelry group. If you do it every single month, then there are coupons and other prizes that you can win. I completed it for the first six months of the year, and so I got a 30% off coupon at the end of the first quarter of the year, and I got a free skein of yarn at the end of the second quarter for doing all six months. And I still need to pick my skein for that. I should email Susan sooner rather than later. It's a little bit, like I should do that really quick. I've done that, and then for July, I was late, and I was so, so sad. I thought that I was ineligible now. I was like, you know what, Never mind. I'm not gonna do DVD socks for the rest of the year. I missed a month. I can't get the grand prize from doing it every single month of 2023. I'll let it go. But I emailed Susan just in case. I mean, the worst that they could say is no, right? Like, but might as well try. And so I tried. I sent her an email with my pictures, including <laughs> I screenshotted my picture on my phone to show the date that that picture was taken as like further proof that like I did it ahead of time. I sent her the pictures and I told her I was working night shift that weekend and I totally spaced on the date. I didn't even realize it was August already. And so she actually unlocked the gravel group for me and let me post in it really quick so I could get my credit for it, which was so, so nice of her. So thank you so much, Susan. That was really, really sweet and thoughtful and I know that she sets up rules for this knit along to keep things organized, but also she's human, we're all human. So it was worth reaching out and seeing if it was a possibility. And I understood that if it wasn't, that it wasn't meant to be. But she fudged the rules a little bit for me and let me post. So I'm gonna be really, really good about not being late on my DVD sock posting anymore because I don't want to abuse that kindness from her. But I am back in the game. My July socks were counted and so I'm still in the running to win the grand prize. There's an exclusive colorway that Susan will create for everyone who participates in the sock club throughout the entire year 2023. So if you complete all 12 months of it, then you get this exclusive skein. So I really want to do that once and then I don't think next year I'm going to try to do it. I'm just going to let it be. I do want to finish because I'm this close now. So that's the plan. We're still in the running, but ooh, what a roller coaster. It was like August 2nd by the time I realized because I'd worked like three nights in a row and then like I'd slept all day and then I'd slept all night and then I woke up on the second day and I was finally aware of what was going on and I was like, oh no. So really grateful that Susan made some exceptions for me. Always worth reaching out to people if you have any concerns or if you need help with anything. Just be gracious either way. Though I haven't started my August DVD socks, so I really need to get going so that I don't run into the same issue at the end of this month. But I had one more finished object and it's really funny. They are like almost the exact same. This colorway is definitely a little bit more blue, but this is another pattern test. And let me go get my sock blockers for my kids' socks. 
I have sock blockers now for kids' socks. Yay! This is the perfect size for my daughter's socks right now. She is two, almost three, though she is on the bigger side. She is in like 4T, sometimes 5T, depending on height, because she's a tall girl. I'm not tall. She gets it from her dad. But these sock blockers fit her foot size perfectly. Yay! I will link them below. I bought them from, I think, Silly Monkey on Amazon. But there's a set of three. There's like one size that's a little bit smaller than this. So they don't have a newborn size or anything like that. And then they have a size that's like youth, that's like almost adult. So it'd probably be like an adult extra small. But this size works for Georgia right now. It's perfect. These socks are called the Athenaeum socks. It's a word I'm not super familiar with. Let me look it up. I should have pulled this up beforehand. How did I not include this on my notes? Anyway, so I normally set up some show notes for my podcast before I start podcasting to keep track of all my FOs, whips, uh, yarns even sometimes, and books that I recently read so I can share them with you, just like my notes to keep me on track. And I didn't put this pattern in, even though I have an FO and a whip using this pattern. Why? Why, Emily? Athenaeum socks by Roro and Cades. That took a long time to find. <laughs> but it's this really cool ribbed detail with these pearl bumps. Super fun. Really simple, but really fun to knit. And the pattern I use, I made this size two, I think. So 48 stitch count sock. And 48 stitches fit my daughter, but I definitely needed to make the foot longer than I thought because her feet are getting bigger, which is crazy to think about. So this is Alexandra, The Art of Yarn. I did purchase it at Wasatch and Wool for the Utah Yarn Crawl. So that yarn store is up in Park City, Utah. I bought a few other skeins there and I shopped at all the other stores in the Utah Yarn Crawl. So that's nine stores, I think, total. So if you want to see that yarn haul, you gotta go check out that vlog that hopefully will be out before this podcast. And I'll link it up above and down below if that is the case, so you can check it out. I'm not going to talk about any of those yarn acquisitions here in this video because that's a lot. Nine yarn stores that I wanted to make sure I supported, not just by visiting, but by purchasing as well. Yes, go check that out. This colorway is called Silver Tin. It's the local yarn store day colorway for 2019. And the base is interesting. I've never worked with a base like this before. It is 75% superwash merino, 15% nylon, and 10% tensile. So that's kind of interesting. I know the tensile, I think it's a plant-based fiber, but I really don't know how that affects the wear of these socks. I don't know. I don't know a lot about tensile. So if you know a lot about tensile, let me know down below. But I like the knitting experience. It was maybe like a little bit more plump than a 75-25, but it wasn't quite the same as like a high twist 80-20. So I don't know. It was good, but it wasn't like anything significantly different than other yarns I've worked with. Since the tensile didn't really affect the knitting experience too much, I wonder if it'll affect the wear. I don't really know. It was a sock base, so we'll see kind of how these wear. Super, super cute. But that is my last finished object. So now let's head on into our whips or our works in progress. Okay, since we already talked about the Athenaeum socks by Roro and Cades, I am going to bring up my whip for the Athenaeum socks as well. So yes, I tested this pattern for Kelly and I did the size two sock, which is for my daughter, but I wanted this pair for myself too. And I thought it would be really fun to match my daughter. And so I decided to use the leftovers of that same yarn to make socks for me. And it is a half finished object. So I have one sock done. Yay, looking really good. I'm excited. It's the same exact pattern. The only things I did different was I made it like a shorter sock. What I did was after I finished my daughter's socks, I measured my skein of yarn and I had 77 grams left. So knowing I had 77 grams left, that means each sock for me has to be like 38 or so grams, no more than that, or else one sock wouldn't get a finish. And so knowing that, that was in my brain, like 38 grams max. 
So then what I did was I started a sock and I did one repeat, which includes this pearl bump. So I did one repeat, measured my ball again, 72 grams. So I saw that one repeat took about five grams. So based on like my foot length and how long this was, I kind of guesstimated how many repeats it would take, plus accounting for the toe, counting for the heel, and a little extra wiggle room because the gusset would take a little bit of yarn too. So keeping all those things in mind, I decided that my safest bet was to do two stripes on the leg and then to do the sock as normal from there and that I would have enough yarn doing it that way. I was right, yay. I can't remember exactly how much I had. I weighed my yarn after I finished one sock and it was like maybe like 44 grams left, which means that I'll definitely have enough. I think I may have like nine or 10 grams left after doing the second sock, but that's cutting it really close if I was gonna do another five gram stripe on each of my socks. So I'm glad that I didn't do that because that would have been very stressful. So I will definitely have enough and I'll have a little bit extra if something horrible goes wrong. I may keep the ball once I'm all done, like 10 grams isn't a minuscule amount if I wanna use it for like color work or something or for stripy socks. I do have like a little glass jar there with some little remnants, some itty bitty balls of yarn that I plan to use. This is how much I have left. I am really excited that I'm gonna use up almost this entire skein for this project, and I'm excited to match my daughter. I did hold up this a little bit for you. I've done the leg, and I've also done the heel flap. What's really cool is this heel flap is actually a ribbed heel flap, which I've never done before. Super interesting. So it's not exactly the same look as the rest of the sock, but it matches aesthetically. I think that's really cool that Kelly did that. This sock seems pretty simple, but all of the details are really, really nice. Like in that heel flap, in same thing with my blueberry waffle socks. I mentioned I really liked how it was symmetrical on both sides of the gusset with like the rib pattern. Same thing with these socks. Like a lot of really intentional things that made it so, it was a really nice knitting experience. Nothing difficult. It was really fun to do, really easy, really simple but the details really mattered and Kelly really delivered on the details. This sock is not far from being finished. I think it'll be finished really quickly actually, but I do have a couple projects that have more of a deadline that I should really finish first, but I might just like power through and get this one done. I don't know. Maybe I should just set some goals for my other projects that have deadlines so that if I have some extra time or if I'm ahead of schedule, I can work on this because this is what I really want to do so that my daughter and I can match. I think that'll be so fun. You can see this colorway is really beautiful with the lavender and blue and gray. So pretty. Really loving how this is working up. And this has been a really fun pattern to do. Fun enough that I did two pairs back to back. The pattern is not available yet, but Kelly's working on the pattern. She's taking her time with it because she doesn't need to stress herself out about this. So it should be coming soon. I'll make sure to link it down below if it's out. The next half finished object is one that you probably have seen if you've watched my Stephen West vlog. So I decided to participate in the Stephen West MCAL, his surprise sock along. This pattern was called Contrast Blast. It was his first time doing a sock mystery knit along. I've seen his shawl knit alongs before. I know they're really popular, but they are not for me. It is way too much knitting. It is way too kooky. He has some really zany style, which I really appreciate his artistic style in his fiber arts, but not for me. I thought though that with making a pair of socks, I could do that. I can have zany socks. I can do something really crazy that I wouldn't normally choose to do because it's a small piece of knitting, just a fun little experience. And I love having fun socks. So I thought that it would be worth giving it a go. And I had a lot of fun actually. I did a two part vlog and in part one, I talked about my prep for the knit along as well as clues one and two. And then in part two, I talked about clues three and four and kind of my conclusions about my knitting experience. So definitely make sure to check those out. I'll link them up above and down below for you. But this is my half finished object. Ta-da! I finished one sock 
And this is Stephen West, is it not? <laughs> I am really happy with this. Actually, I'm really happy with a lot of it. There's some things that I definitely wouldn't choose to do again, but for the most part, it was some really interesting and fun techniques. Lots of mosaic knitting was really the style of things, which I was kind of expecting it to be more fair aisle knitting, which kind of cinches in your knitting with the floats and stuff. And so the stitch count was larger than I normally do for my foot, but I thought it would be fine. But it was a little bit loose on me. This is gonna be a cozy house sock, I think. My favorite parts of this pattern are this cable that kind of cuts through and kind of cuts off the rest of the ribbing. I think that's really fun. This stair step is really fun, which is great because we did it down here too. I love that the heel flap has these like little, it's like a garter bump of color, super fun. This cable detail is really cool too. The toe is like a ribbed garter detail. And I thought that this like stripe was kind of fun and, and like the movement, but not necessarily my style. Same thing with this like woven basket, not necessarily my style, but I liked a lot of this sock. I did find because we were doing some mosaic knitting and because we were like slipping stitches for like four rounds at a time, it kind of cinched things in a little weird. So you can see I have some bunching of fabric right here. Not sure if there's anything I could do to really fix that. But if you have any tips, let me know. Yeah, I don't know. Like I've never done mosaic knitting and slipped stitches more than one or two rounds. So slipping it four rounds and then also doing a cabling detail, which also shortens the length of things. Just, I don't know. I don't know. It's just a lot of extra fabric, but if it's well, I, enjoyed the process of working through this and trying to finish it in time. And I did, I think it looks really cute. The colors, I'm so happy with my color choice. I did Wilbur Fiberco in the color Raspberry Cordial. And then this contrast color is called Flower Crown. They're both from Bethany's Anne of Green Gables collection. High, high contrast. I really did great on that choice. So I'm happy about that. And I will have lots of yarn left over so we'll see like where I put these. I don't think they'll be counted as scraps when I'm done, honestly, though I do have a lot more progress to make on the second sock. I'm still on clue one of the second sock. I did not start with my first sock because I didn't have the right needles for it. And that was on vacation when the clue came out. So I started a little bit late with the first sock anyway. And I, tried to get as far as I could while I was doing the vlog, but I didn't want to postpone the vlog just to work on the second sock. So I'm just doing this at my leisure, which means I haven't worked on it since I filmed that vlog, <laughs> which was a couple weeks ago. I should probably pick it up again, just do a little bit. It's kind of fun to do just like a couple stripes at a time because it doesn't take very much time and it feels really quick because the stripes are just every four rounds. So. That's how far I've gotten on the second sock. I am planning on doing the mirrored socks. So this is a right sock and that one will be a left sock. So there are separate instructions for doing so. So that is the plan. Let me know if you participated in the Stephen West MCAL, if you're still working on it like I am, or if you pounded through both socks during the month of July, I'd love to hear your experience with it too. Very much Stephen West, very kooky, very zany, but I'm glad I participated and I see myself doing it again in the future. Though still not his shawl, cause that's just like too much for me. <laughs> okay, and a little accountability because I did not finish my July socks. I did not even work on them after the last podcast episode. So here they are, one repeat in. I just had too much going on, but I've started them. So I'll be working on them and I love these colors. They'll be ready for next July, I guess. But <laughs> this is a fun pattern. I should pick these up again. But when I have test knits going on and I was really trying hard to focus on the Stephen West knit along last month, I still need to do the Desert vs. Fabric socks this month. So we'll see. Those are towards the bottom of the pile, especially because I have a new test knit that I signed up for. This is the Vortex socks by Carrie Kogan Brown. And she was actually my co-designer with Sock Week. She had the affinity socks that she designed. So that was really fun. That's how I first found her was knowing that we were both designing for Nitty Nettie Sock Week. And I saw that she had this pattern and 
I just barely cast it on the cup. <laughs> Ta-da! I have this little blip of the contrast color and I just barely started the cup. So it's got a ways to go, but it's this really fun textured pattern that kind of swirls around the sock. I thought it would be another fun, easy, a little bit more than vanilla sock, but like a pretty simple pattern to work on. And so that's why I wanted to do it. My colors are Backcountry Knitter. This is the color Watermelon Soiree. So pretty and so fun for the summer. I think this was maybe the local yarn store day colorway this year from Backcountry Knitter. I can't remember. And then this color is called Dragon Fruit that I bought separately. It has its own little tag. I also bought these for the Utah Yarn Crawl. I bought them from Seed Stitch Store, which is in Bountiful, Utah. And I actually got to meet the backcountry knitter, which was really fun. And she was very modest about it. Like I was asking questions and she was like, actually my yarn's here too. And I'm like, no way, why didn't you say that when I first started talking to you? So uh, that was really fun to meet her. So I get to work on this yarn. I'm really excited. It should be really fun and summery. And this pattern test is not due till the end of the month, like August 28th or something. And I only need to do one sock, but it would be nice to kind of knock it out and start working on it. So I casted it on because I am in a cast on mood, but I wanted to film this before I did all my cast ons because I'm going out of town for the weekend. And so I wanted to film this podcast before like the middle of August. So, I have not done all the cast ons that I hope to do soon, but I will share with you all the plans that I have coming up and that you should see on the next podcast. But first, there's more. Just one more whip that I've worked on. And this is my Viking cardigan by Martin Story. I'm knitting it for my husband. And I had started it in December as like a last stitch Christmas present effort. And then I realized I would not finish it in the month of December. And so I put it off. I'm working on it off and on and his birthday is at the end of this month on August 31st so my hope is to have it finished in time. I don't think he knows how close I am to finishing so I kind of want to keep it on the down low and be a little bit more secretive about it so it can be a really good surprise that I have it done just in time for the fall season to come around but I have a little hiccup with sizing so I might have to do some measurement when I see him today after work so that might like ruin the surprise or he might not care too much. I might just say oh it's for your cardigan I want to work on it a little bit more yeah, we'll see. I don't know. <laughs> but I need to measure his arms. So I'm working on a sleeve right now. Let's see the front. Ta-da! So last time I worked on this, it was a couple months ago, actually, because things have just been really busy. But the last time I worked on this, I thought I was to the point where I just needed to knit straight. But I had a few more increases to add in. And so when I looked at the pattern yesterday, I realized I had to do that. I've probably done like two inches since yesterday, just trying to finish up those increases. So I have finished the increases. I put a marker in to mark where the increases ended to help me better match it with the next sleeve that I'll do. But now I need to knit straight. And my problem is I need to knit straight for a certain length. I think I'm just about there, maybe only like another centimeter to go, but I know my husband has longer arms than usual, not like absurdly long arms, but he definitely has longer arms. And so I want to make sure to measure him. It's like this measurement from like his wrist to like his underarm. I need to measure that to be sure that it'll work out okay, that it'll fit him well, because I would hate to finish the sweater and then it doesn't fit him well because that would be one thing that he would really be bugged about and maybe i'll ask him also about the fit of the sleeves if he wants it to fit exactly or be a little bit like a smidge longer if he'd want to roll up the sleeves i should ask him that too but i want to measure him just to make sure that i make it the right length because this length is the length i need to knit this to before i start like the short rows to do the shaping and so I think that it'll be a really easy modification to do if he needs a longer length for that like underarm length to just tack it on now and then I can move into the armhole shaping. So that would be like the short rows in the middle to make it like a rounded top to fit into like the sleeve hole. Anyway, so it all makes sense in my brain. I'm sorry if it's not coming across. This is a magazine pattern from 2012. It is not size inclusive because it is that old, unfortunately. And it was kind of hard to find. It was in Rowan Magazine 
issue like 52 or something like way back when 2012 it was hard to find I'm grateful I did because we had found this pattern on Ravelry and then I had to track down the pattern like in real life because it was not listed on Ravelry it's exclusive to this magazine issue but I found it I'm working on it it's got this really fun like patchwork type of style with some stockinette sections and some cabled sections this sleeve is coming along I think what I'm gonna do is measure my husband, find out his preferred fit for his sleeve, and then I'm gonna knit straight to the right length that I need it. And then I'm going to put this on waist yarn or on like a uh, try-it-on tubing or something like that. And then I'm gonna knit the second one so that I can make it match <laughs> to make sure that like I'm knitting it to the exact same length before I start the shaping section, I think is what I'll do because with like all the increases and like the edges are just like, it's really hard to read how many rows like to try to count it. So I think it'll make it easier for me to make the sleeves match exact if I do it that way. So that's the plan. It's a little bit of a crunch time. I gotta finish the sleeve, knit one more sleeve, block everything, sew it all together, and then do an applied like button band and collar, I think is how it's constructed. None of that will take a huge amount of time because honestly this is an worsted weight yarn it's a pretty quick knit i'm using wool of the andy's worsted from knit picks or we crochet hot tip is check out both websites knit picks and we crochet because they have different deals on the different websites even though they basically have the same stock not exactly the same but it's almost exactly the same and so if you want to find a sale check out both sites if you're shopping but i will the Andy's worsted it's in the color delft heather it's in this beautiful like almost a navy blue it's worse to wait so it's working up pretty fast I just need to like set my mind to it and get it done. And anytime my husband's not around or anytime my husband's asleep, I wanna work on this so I can try to knock it out. That is the goal this month. I would love to finish it for him. He deserves a really nice sweater. Okay, I have some plans for things I want to knit. Ta-da! That I wound up yesterday. And my ball winder is dying. <laughs> It has been clicking and getting stuck and having a lot of friction and resistance. My husband's fixed it up a couple times, but he did say that some of the gears are grinding down, which explains the skipping and getting stuck and whatnot. He said he could 3D print me a new piece, but like how many trials would that take and how long would it take? And there's other things I'd rather have him do around the house. So I think what I'm gonna do is buy a new ball winder treat myself so i'm gonna do some shopping let me know down below what ball winder i should get what you have that you might really like i've had this one for a few years so i'm not sad about moving on to something a little bit nicer and more reliable <laughs> that can put up with all the stress i put it in but after my husband fixed it up yesterday i was able to wind up all these skeins to prepare for casting on things i keep mentioning this but i really do want to cast this on the problem is Andrea Mowry recommends using the two color brioche cast on, which is not one I'm familiar with. So I know it'll take some brain power. So I need to do it during the daytime, but I want to make a Harlow hat. Once I cast on, it'll be super fun and easy. So I just need to cast on, set aside an hour, work on that. But this is Coast to Coast Yarn Co in the color. The name I thought of was Porphyria. And I know that's not right. Cause that's like the vampire disease, <laughs> polypore and earthen. Really, really beautiful. It's like a purpley brown plum color. It's a little hard to capture. So that's been on my list to make for a long time. It's been wound up for a few months. I need to just start it. I also want to make more tops and sweaters. I just have not been making a lot this summer. I have an idea to make the Maven top by Maven Handcrafted. It's just a really simple stockinette with some garter stripes in it, tee. And I think that it'll be really wearable and super fun for the fall. I got this color. This is Teeny Button Wednesday in a Cafe, which is a Taylor Swift inspired colorway. And I bought it a few years ago, wanting to make a like summery top and I just haven't gotten around to it. So I would love to finally make this. I think it'll work up really, really fast, even though it is fingering weight yarn. So I really wanna make that. You can see the difference in these hand dyed skeins a little bit. This one's more brown. And so I'll definitely need to alternate skeins for that. So that's ready to go. I need to 
spot for that. I also have my Desert Fist Dye Works yarn for this next month. Ta-da! This is called Abstract Cacti, and I'm using just like a cream mini to go with it. Nice contrast. I was thinking, what if I do a cactusy color work motif, like near the cuff in this? I think it's enough of a contrast you'll be able to see it well. I might do that. I don't know. I don't really know what I want to do. I'm just a little bit sick of vanilla socks, but I also don't have a lot of brain power to do much more than that. So we'll see. I might do something fun with like color work just because I can. What do you think? What would you do with this? I just figured this is a perfect color for August. Living in the desert, I'm in Utah. Though the part of Utah I'm in is not deserty really anymore, but we are still like in a constant drought. <laughs> it's just a little bit more green than the rest of the state. I am inclined to do something different. Maybe do some color work, little cactuses. Yeah, I think that it's perfect colorway for the August deserty end of summer. Everything is really hot and dry type of mood I'm in right now. <laughs> so those are all my anticipated cast-ons that I was hoping to cast on before I filmed this podcast. And if not yet, but I don't have that many things on the needles that are really busy right now. Just a couple. I have like one test knit. I have a bunch of things I want to finish. A couple deadline-y things, but I want to start a lot of new projects so I have things ready to go that I can work on and pick up as I want to. I just need like a variety of projects going on. And right now I don't feel like I've had a lot of variety. I've done a lot of socks recently. And even though I still hope to do socks, I want to do some other things too. All right, it's another big yarn haul month. And we're just not even gonna talk about the Utah yarn crawl because that was also quite a big haul and I'll talk about that in my vlog that you can check out. But these are other things that I've had. Most of them were shipped to me from Dyers, but I do have a couple things I purchased in store and including something that I won from the Utah Yarn Crawl that I didn't really get a chance to talk about there. So I wanna talk about it here while I've got you. Alfred, do you need to get out? No, you're just being a pain. Okay. Where to start? Okay. First and foremost, I want to talk about some bags. My friend Ashley of Goose and Ghost Knits has started doing some bag designs and she's also an artist. And so she's been designing some fabrics herself by like drawing them digitally, which is really, really cool. And so then she'll print out the fabrics and she'll make project bags. She just started this. And so for her first release, I made sure to buy a couple and I'm currently using one for a sock project. So cute. But this is her knitting bag design. Look at the cute little knitting things. Oh my goodness, I love it. And it's just like a simple little project bag. I have a one skein sock project and the mini in here. There's a little bit of extra room. You could probably do a two skein sock project in here for some good color work and that would work. It's got some ribbon drawstring to hold it together. And I do like having bags with a handle so that I can be knitting while this is on my arm, like while I'm outside, while I'm running errands, while I'm waiting, just to kind of have my bag attached to me so I don't like lose it somewhere or drop it, especially with my toddler on the move all the time. It's really nice to have a drawstring and something that I can hold onto and have on my wrist. So I brought the knitting bag and she had a crochet bag too. So I had to give crochet some love too the granny square crochet hooks so fun and she actually told me this was the only crochet bag i think of this size or maybe like that she made at all because she is going to be updating the fabric so this is like exclusive like i feel so special that i was able to snag it i like jumped on alfred's stuff. i feel so special that i was able to snag it i jumped on her etsy as soon as i could after her bag release they're like almost identical just slightly different color scheme and styles because they were designed separately but coordinating. She's still just starting out with her bag designs so definitely make sure to check her out. She has some pattern designs too so check her out there but I think she's really enjoying designing the bags herself and being able to make them too as she is a sewist as well so make sure to support her so that she can branch out and do some more creative designs too. Super fun. There's her little logo. 
super exciting, super fun to be able to support a friend in that way. And so I encourage you to support her too. That's like the only non yarny thing. I'll share, I won, I won a prize for the Utah Yarn Crawl, not the big prize. Each of the stars was doing a big prize if you finished your like punch card or like your stamp card at that store and like gave them your completed card. I did not win that prize, but I won like a little mini raffle that one of the stores was having. It was Yarn on the Corner. It's in Sandy, Utah. It was this cute little store that actually has like half quilting store so it's half quilt on the corner and half yarn on the corner super cool to see all the long arm machines and whatnot it was just really really neat because it's all like within the same building and so i won one of their little prizes that they had they had a, like maybe a dozen little prizes and i won yay so my prize i won some ample sock yarn which i've never worked with before so i'm really excited about that so i have a full skein ample this is called Fair Hill. It's like a greeny brown, like a mossy brown. And then this color is called Nutkin 25 gram mini. So this yarn is 70% wool, 20% alpaca and 10% nylon. So interesting sock base, one I've never worked with before. So we'll see how that would work up. I'm not sure. I also got a little drawstring bag, which will work perfect for holding a project in it. It's a really nice quality drawstring too. And I also got the one sock pattern by Kate Atherley. There's like a QR code in here, but it's basically just like a simple vanilla sock pattern. But I think it'll still be good to look at that and decide if there's any like extra tips and tricks that I would maybe want to try in my sock knitting. I knit lots of socks. And so I don't necessarily need a sock pattern, especially for a vanilla sock, but I think it's really helpful to test out different designers patterns so that you can learn different things because everyone knits socks a little bit differently. So there's something to learn from everyone who knits socks. So I might look at this pattern and just see if there's anything different that Kate Authorly does for her socks that I would want to implement in my socks. So that was really fun to like get the call. I was at work and I didn't know if it was like a call for my doctor or something because uh, I don't have their number saved. And so I answered it while I was at work and they're like, hi, this is yarn on the corner. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so that was really fun that I was able to win that. It was like a really nice surprise. And it was really cute. The store worker who called me was like, you won a prize. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. And she's like, do you want to know what it is? can I open it for you and tell you over the phone? And I was like, yes, you can. She just like really wanted to open the little prize. So that was really cute. So she opened it and told me what I got. So that was really fun. And I had to go back and get it. And I actually, when I went back and picked up my prize, I was with my mom because my family was visiting from town. My, my parents came to visit us, which was so, so nice. So we went to that yarn store together and I picked up a couple more skeins of yarn. This is... Sweet Georgia Tough Love Sock Yarn. This is the color Cayenne, and this is the color Orchid. And I'll tell you why I bought this. <laughs> One of the skeins that I purchased on the Utah Yarn Crawl was this Sweet Georgia Rose Day. It's a beautiful variegated. And why I bought this was because they had a sample knit up. It was a Carly Perrins pattern from her minis collection let me look it up so i'm pretty sure that this pattern that was made into a sample was the fairy ring socks which was super super cute i'm pretty sure that the sample that they had in the shop was the scraptacular socks pattern and the specific pattern within this bundle is called the fairy ring socks so it's a super cute color work design with just some like little dots on it it was so amazing and I loved it so much. I loved how this skein worked up. This was the main color that I bought it at the yarn crawl. And then I just could not stop thinking about it and could not figure out what else I wanted to do with this yarn. I just could not stop thinking about that sample that they had. And so then I was trying to decide if I wanted to buy one of these or the other because they use both of these within the pattern. And I just couldn't decide because I loved their samples so much, I just had to make the exact same one. So I bought both. That's why I bought these, but it was really fun to go back and visit them again and buy these. 
I love these colors. It'll look really good together. I love that sample and I could not get it out of my brain. So here you are. I'm going to make the exact same one. <laughs> I got a shipment from Desert Fist Dye Works in the mail. So I got a 30% coupon after completing the first quarter of the monthly sock club. So I already mentioned that earlier. So with my 30% coupon, I made some purchases, yes. So first, this colorway. It's called Blue Footed Booby, as in the bird. I did the DK weight sock yarn because I, need more quick patterns and I thought this would be a really fun colorway to do for a DK White sock. So I'm going to save this for another month when I really need something really quick. But I thought this was a really fun color. I love that blue. So bright. I also got, this is called Jobs, as in Steve Jobs, based on a picture of him that was like in Technicolor and in gray. It's really hard to see, but like the Technicolor, it's like a multicolored stripe and it's only like a two color stripe, I think. There's like the gray and then the multicolored and it like bounces back and forth between those two, but it was a really fun, like a variegated stripe. And so I thought that would be really fun and interesting and really colorful. Not sure what I'll make with this. I think socks would be fun. This might be a fun hat, but I also don't know if this is like too much color going on. I might not want to do that. I don't really know. I also have, this is Janice, and this actually is pretty similar to the Wine Country color that I did recently as well. It's got this beautiful orange, pinks, purples, yellows, so pretty. This is called Walvis Bay, which I don't know where that is, but a beautiful sunset, but like a little bit different than a normal sunset. Blue, purple, orange, white. And then this one is also a different base I've never tried. It's called the Zien base. And it is their sparkle base for their fingering. And it's variegated because I just needed something different from Desert Vista Dye Works. I was getting a little bit sick of knitting the same socks every single month. So I, I thought a variegated colorway might work. This one is called Firecracker. I thought this would be fun. And with the sparkle, I don't know how well you can see that. I thought that would be fun. And I wanted to do a mini, so I got the Red Speckle Mini. There was like a mini set with like six different colors, and so I chose the Red Speckle to purchase separately to go with it. Yeah, so I thought that would be fun. I was thinking about doing that this month, and then I just like wasn't feeling it. Not feeling very patriotic right now. So I'm not sure when I'll do that. Maybe I'll do it just when I'm sick of doing stripy socks. Who knows? So that was a good Desert Vista Dye Works order that I picked up. I also ordered from Kimber's Cozy Creations. She had like a summer, oh, summer sock showdown, I think it was called, where she had all these summer colorways she came up with and she was pitting them against each other. And then the winner after this like March Madness style tournament would be like on sale, like 15% off or something. But then all the other ones were still like on sale for this pre-order. So for this pre-order, I picked up Lilac Lemonade. Such a pretty color. I love how the yellow and the purple kind of like fade together. So it's very watercolory. I also picked up, I think this is the one that won. It's called Sea Glass. It's got like aqua and a mint mini. I don't know, the colors are pretty close together. Super fun though, really fun. And then I also got, this is Shark Bite, which is too funny because I made the Shark Bite sock pattern and I announced that I was doing this test and she like sent me a message and was like, guess what? I have a Shark Bite colorway that's coming out. So it was like perfect timing. So I definitely wanted to support her and get this Shark Bite colorway. I was thinking I might make another pair of socks with the shark bite pattern, but I might modify it a little bit just to do something different. I could definitely make them taller. I don't know. That's kind of what I was thinking, but I don't have all the details figured out yet. Maybe for like a next summer something. So yeah, it's got this like gray and red, lots of fun red speckles. I got that from Kimber. I do really like supporting her business. All these makers and shops and things will be linked down below so you can support these 
people too. My last big order that I made, and this pre-order, I feel like I've been waiting on it for like three or four months. Like I don't remember how long the pre-order time frame was, but it was like 12 to 16 weeks, I feel like. So I've been waiting a while, but it is finally here. It is Wilbury Fiberco's Caboose Collection. Let me show you. This is Corgi Caboose. <laughs> so cute. This one turned out darker than I thought it would be. This is still like a really pretty taupey color, but I do love me some corgis and I love me some corgi butts. So <laughs> there's that one. This, this one is called Fox Fanny. This is a really pretty, like tonally variegated. A lot of the colors in this collection were more tonals or like gently variegated colors, gently speckled colors. This is called Bee Butt and she has released it a few times. So I'm happy that I finally got a chance to purchase it. And I think I'm gonna make the Humbly Bee socks out of this. I have a couple other skeins that I've been like, I've bought thinking that that might be a good fit and it hasn't really been a good fit or that after I purchased it, I realized it might work. I think this is the one and the name just fits Bee Butt. So that might be a new cast on sometime soon, the Humbly Bee socks this uh, speckling is not too much. So I think it'll still show the texture really well. And then I also got, this is Pink Patootie. <laughs> a beautiful variegated pink. I got it on the Berry Cozy Sock, which is the other skeins are all on Berry Cozy Sock. Whoa, no they're not. Wait, what? Are they all on different ones? Oh my gosh, what am I doing? Okay, Corgi Caboose, Berry Cozy. 80 20 superwash merino and nylon so the berry cozy is 80 20 superwash merino berry sock is superwash bfl and nylon this one is also berry sock with the bfl this one is cozy sock with the superwash merino and nylon and this one is berry surrey alpaca so soft so cute and i want to make i have to look it up Red Door Fiber Studio made this. So let me look it up. Man, I'm a mess. I'm like, have not completed my show notes very well, huh? Aha, here it is. The Laulu Shawl by Sari Nordlin. Yes, okay, saving it in my favorites so I can find it again. <laughs> but it's this really beautiful like bandana shawlet ascot type thing with this beautiful texture and totally influenced by Red Door Fiber Co. <laughs> I'm gonna make it out of this. Super pretty. I love me a good pink. Pink pastel, all that stuff. Only a couple things left I wanna share with you. I just got this order in. This is the only yarn I've acquired so far in August, so I'm doing really good as far as stash goes. But this is from Dying Wishes Yarn Co., my friend Sarah. These are from her favorites collection that she did. And I already had purchased quite a few of her favorites. And so I wanted to buy skeins that I had not purchased previously. So this one is called Chill in the Air. It's this beautiful like blue green. Some really beautiful dimension. Love, love, love. And then this one is called Mulberry. Also some really beautiful dimension with like the purple and red. So I just grabbed those couple skeins. I think they'll be really good for doing color work maybe. I don't have a lot of tonals and solids in my stash so good to add those i also got this is a dye i haven't purchased from before made by Haley bailey i wanted to support her this is the color lepto leptopoma and it's inspired by a snail she did a little snail collection super cute like mint but i love how this mint has like this light yellow, some darker bits, some pinks in it. So all colors I love. I'm not just a pink girly, I'm also a mint girly. Love this. No clue what I'm gonna make. So that's why I only have one skein. If I don't know what I'm gonna make with it, it goes in my sock bin. <laughs> Cause I can always make socks. I can always find a way for it to fit into a larger project. I also have one random skein I've purchased and this is from Explore Knits and Fibers. And this does not look like one I'd normally get, but this is Beach Read, Red Door Fiber Studio, and Explorer Knits and Fiber did a collaboration for Emily Henry Colorways, and I love Emily Henry's books. They are my perfect contemporary romance because they are not cheesy. They have a lot of depth to them, to the characters. They are very, very real. They're so fun to read. I can binge them so, so well. So. 
I've read all four of her contemporary romances that she's come out with. Uh, I've not read any of her older things. She has a couple like young adult books. So I definitely want to read those too. And I want to reread People We Meet on Vacation because I read that a few years ago and I read all of her other books this year. And so I kind of want to read it with a fresh perspective so I can kind of figure out which I like more. Though Happy Place and Book Lovers are definitely my top two but mm, I'm not sure which one wins out. She just announced her new book called Funny Story coming out next year. I'm so excited. But anyway, this is called Beach Read based on the cover. And my plan for this, I bought all of the Surrey skeins for all the colorways. I could not get the coordinating color that went with this, at least that I could see on Exploring It's website. They only had that, they only had that tone of color available in the sock set. And I want to make a reading blanket to cozy up with. I think I'll probably get like a Knit Picks stroll or something to hold with this yarn, just like in a white or cream or something. And then I'm gonna hold the Surrey with it to kind of tone it down and even it out, make it softer, just so that the colors are not quite so vibrant. And I'm gonna make an Emily Henry reading blanket. And I don't know exactly the pattern I'm gonna do. Maybe I'll do like quadrants or something, but from, Red Door Fiber Studio, I ordered all six colors. So all three main colors and all three uh, tonals that went with them. So I'm a little sad I couldn't get the tonal in Surrey from Exploring It, but it'll be fine. I'll use seven colors and we'll see kind of how it turns out. Maybe I'll do stripes, maybe I'll do squares. I don't really know because I haven't gotten Red Door's colors yet. Those are still in the works. That's like my only really big yarn order that's still coming that aren't included in my advents. So that's what this is. That'll be a really fun project. So if you have a fun blanket project that would work really well with like seven colors, so like maybe not doing quadrants because I wouldn't be able to like make it even. But if you have a fun idea for a blanket pattern, let me know. I want to hold this with either like stroll or maybe something a little bit thicker so it's like a worsted weight blanket. I don't really know, but it'll be a really fun reading blanket dedicated to Emily Henry because I love her so much. And then the last thing I got was actually a gift from my mom. When my parents came to visit, my mom brought a housewarming gift, I guess, I don't know, of yarn. It's this mini set, the Malibu mini set from Sorella Yarn, and it was from Tony Lipsy and Sorella Yarn's collaboration that they did not too long ago. Love these colors. I'm a pastel person. I love desaturated colors. Oh, I love them. Too bad they won't like stay put. <laughs> but uh, ah, having having issues. Okay, <laughs> so really excited about these. Not sure what I'll make, but it was a really fun little surprise gift that my mom got me because my mom crochets and I've taught her how to knit a little bit. She's knit a little bit, but hasn't really gotten into it. And so we are fiber buddies, which is so, so fun to be able to share that hobby with her. And because I may be going to a fiber festival or two or three in October, I am really not going to be buying a lot of yarn the next couple months, kind of save up, budget, and get ready for that really fun trip. So I don't think I'll have as much the next few months. I do still have advents and stuff coming in, but I won't have a lot to talk about since I won't open them early. So yes, that's exciting. Again, I feel really grateful that I have a job that I can support all of these small makers and I encourage you as you are able to support them as well. If not financially, then by following them on Instagram, by liking their posts, by engaging with them online to kind of support their shops because it is a hard time for small businesses right now, the way the economy is going. And I'm grateful that I can do my part in supporting them and I look forward to having more in my yarn stash that I can choose from and making projects that really bring me a lot of joy in the moment. Okay, so now it's time for like fun, not yarny things. This is getting really long and I think that's just the case with my podcast being only once a month now. There's just lots to share and lots to talk about. Though I am going to be editing some things out with my coughing and clearing my throat and drinking water and taking care of my cat stuff because my cat was being a bother. Anyway, so 
We'll see how long this podcast episode ends up, but it will be a little bit on the longer side. Let's buckle up for my like personal things. So a couple things that have happened over the last month. We had sock week and my shark bite socks pattern was one of the like sponsored items. So I have a crochet pattern and a knit pattern. Those are still both available in my shops. They were not exclusive to Sock Week, unlike the other products featured for Sock Week. That was really fun to be a part of. I was working like three days that week, but I was able to get a lot done with the projects that I had going on. And it was really fun. I really love Sock Week. I love the concept. I love being able to participate in that community. This was the first year I did it where I was also working full time. And so it was a little bit different, but I still was able to do a lot of knitting, which was really fun. I, as a sponsor, was able to participate in a lot of the events. And in one of them, I was part of Celebrity Family Feud, which is really fun, definitely shark themed. And I realized I don't know a lot of shark themed movies <laughs> so that was one thing that was lacking for me that was really fun i'm glad i was able to participate and i'm really grateful that i was selected as a sponsor with my sock patterns because that was the most successful pattern release that i've ever had and i mentioned that in my last podcast and so i'm so so grateful and so so grateful for all of you who continue to support my pattern design and i hope to have another pattern out this coming fall i should start working on that soon too. Maybe I should have wound up that yarn as well so I could get started on that. Besides Sock Week, the only other exciting thing that happened is that my family came to visit, which was so, so fun. I'm so glad that they came. They actually drove out all the way from New York where I grew up. And so that's a few day journey. So it was a long trip for them. They stayed here for uh, four or five days and then they took a long trip back. They dropped off some things, some things like from my childhood and even some things that they thought Georgia, my daughter might like. So definitely still need to go through all of that stuff and just figure out what we wanna keep and what we wanna donate. But that was really fun to be able to see them, spend a lot of time with them. It was bookended by like me working shifts and so it wasn't like ideal timing, but it is the way that it is. And I'm really glad I could still spend time with them, even with me working like a random night shift when they were here. It's just things were a little bit crazy that week. But it was really nice to be able to visit with my family. We got to go to a local bookstore, a local indie shop called Poppy's down in Spanish Fork. We got to go to Harmony, which is my favorite yarn store that's local to me. It's just a really fun, eclectic little shop, and that's in Provo. So that was a really fun day. We got to go up to Thanksgiving Point and go see the dinosaurs. They had this thing called Dinosaur Island, which I first saw on Yarnacious's story because they are also from Utah and they are also dino lovers. And my daughter loves dinosaurs. So they have this like animatronic like setup of like dozens of dinosaurs throughout their garden area at Thanksgiving Point. And so we went there and we got to walk around and see all these dinosaurs that were like moving their heads and like roaring at us. And my daughter loved it. It was really, really cool. A little bit hot, not a fan of the like 90 degree weather, especially with like my thyroid issues now. Like it bothers me a lot more than it used to when I was younger. It was a little bit hot, but it was really fun. Been able to just enjoy hanging out with my family, playing a couple games with my family, going to visit some stores and see a couple things. It was just fun to visit. And it was, it was really, really nice to see my family. I don't see them often enough. We are going to see them in October though. I did allude to that earlier. So my family lives in New York. They are a little ways away from Rhinebeck and like the Albany area of New York, but we are planning on traveling to visit my family and then driving out to go to Rhinebeck and Associated Festivals and driving back to visit my family. And my mom is coming with us. I think all of us are coming, like even my dad and maybe even my little brother, if he doesn't have school stuff going on. Probably not him though, cause like it'll be towards the end of like the regular week that we'll be driving out, but I'm so excited to go. So if you have plans to go to any of the fiber festivals happening in New York this year, let me know. 
I'll be there with my mom and we'll see who else comes with us inside the festival or if we just leave the guys and my daughter behind to do other fun things in the area while my mom and I shop and have a lot of fun. So that'd be really cool. It'd be so fun to see any of you and to just experience it. I've never been before. And so it'll be a really special time to go with my mom because that is like the big fiber festival in New York that we can go to. My mom's technically a local and I used to be a local, but we weren't in the fiber arts like we are now back when I was living there. So it'll be really fun to go. I'm so excited. I'm also a little intimidated though because it'd be so fun to like, meet a bunch of people that I've only seen online, but I also feel like I'm gonna feel shy and like I'm fangirling. And also I feel like I probably want to vlog it, but also like my channel's not very big, but I am almost 2,000 subscribers, which is so, so exciting. Thank you all for being here. I really hope to hit 1,000 this year. That would be an amazing accomplishment. I don't know, like I think I'm in my head a little bit too much, a lot of imposter syndrome. I think I just need to like go all in and just really enjoy my time because I don't know when I'll be able to go again. And this will be a really fun time to go with my mom, to go to see some of these people that I really admire in the community and to do some really fun shopping and just a really awesome experience to enjoy the fall and fiber there in that area of New York. Okay, the only other thing that I wanna talk about is the things I've read recently, which I actually did write in my show notes so I shouldn't have to flounder too much. And I even wrote in all the authors' names because I'm that good, only sometimes. <laughs> the one question I have for you is, do you watch any booktube channels? Do you like this book content? I am getting really into reading books and having a lot of fun with it and thinking that maybe it would be cool to have another channel about book content. And that way I could keep this channel more focused on fiber content or because I've been thinking about rebranding, I could rebrand in a more broad way and include fiber videos and book videos on here. I was thinking maybe like the Cozy Crow or something like that. I don't really know. Nothing is really like calling to me. I'm not really sure. So let me know. Do you want me to include separate book content on this channel? Should I have a separate book channel? Should I just include it here on the podcasts? I don't know. Let me know what you think because I'm really enjoying books and I really like sharing what I've been reading and delving into like booktube in general and I've been really enjoying it. But let's talk about the books that I've been reading. If I have them here with me, I will show them physical copy, but I've done a lot of audiobooks as well and even a book or two on my e-reader. And so I will like pop up a picture here so that you can see what the cover looks like but let's get right into it. I have my list in like chronological order of order that I finished the books in. I'm gonna try to be quick, talk about what I liked about the book, maybe what my rating was, just give you a little heads up so that if you haven't read the book before, you might get a sense whether that's a good fit for you or not. First book I finished was The Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels, and I had started this last time, and best word to describe this is absurd. <laughs> It is a fun book. It was kind of hard to get into. It took me like a hundred or so pages to really get into the language and the voice of the characters because it was just such a different like attitude. It was kind of satirical, kind of whimsical, kind of witty. It was just like a little hard to understand. So like for example, an assassin comes, tries to kill her and she says, but we haven't been properly introduced. That would be rude to assassinate me but like totally serious. It's just absurd. And it's so different than any book I've ever read before. It is a fantastical historical romance. Kind of sums it all up. It's set in like the early 1900s or like late 1800s, maybe. I can't quite remember the time frame, but it is Victorian. So that would be 1800s. There's assassinations, they are pirates, but they also have magical powers and they can fly their houses instead of ships. So yeah, it's just like absurd and like I don't know where this idea came from, but it is a fun time. I think I rated it a four star. There's three books in the series and I purchased the second book because I decided I liked it enough I want to read some more but it was just really weird. <laughs> so do that what you will. Let me know what you think of it. Like I think the premise is so unique and it's just such a different style of book than anything else I've ever read. So that made it a really fun experience. 
pretty fun. And it was a little bit of a steamy romance. Also a little bit of a slow burn too. The next book that I finished was Tales from the Cafe by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. I had to read it to make sure that I got it right. And this is the second book in the stories of like before the coffee gets cold. I think the third book is already out. I've not read that one yet. And this is just a collection of like short stories basically. I mean, there's different chapters, but they're short stories related to people coming to a cafe where they can travel back in time. They have to stay in the cafe. They can only stay as long as their coffee is warm, but they can visit with someone who is in the cafe. They can also travel in the future too, if they like arrange a time for that person to be there. They can't change anything about the past or the future by their visit, but they can receive gifts. They can give gifts. They can talk. And so it just provides some closure for them. So it's an interesting like character study in different experiences that humans have and what we would get out of getting the chance to talk. So good book. I liked it. Not like super meaningful and significant. Didn't stick with me like in a really solid way, but I really liked it. I think I rated like a 3.75 or like a four star. It's right around in that range definitely could be really significant and meaningful for you depending on like what mood you're in. So I definitely recommend it. And it's pretty short too, even with like all the different like long, long chapters, there's only like four stories in it, I think. And so it was like a six hour listen on the audiobook. The next book I read was The Lonely Hearts Book Club by Lucy Gilmore. And this felt kind of like A Man Called Uva by Friedrich Bachmann. And I really enjoyed it. It was like a group of misfits that come together into a book club. And there's like, you know, grumpy old man that's a little bit misunderstood. He stays grumpy for sure. <laughs> but a couple other people, there's, you know, like a divorced mom that's struggling with her relationship with her daughter. There's a girl who's engaged to a guy who is like just bland. You know, there's like a whole group of people and it was just really fun. I really enjoyed it. It was super witty, lots of book references that were really fun. The banter between like the old man and other people, like he could lay it down. Like he was, he was really mean, but in a funny way. Um, and they ended up like getting used to his sense of like humor and his sense of like talking to them and his insults. And so they could dish it out too, like once they got used to him, even though at first he was really abrasive. And so it was really fun to just like see them get to know each other and see how they all changed throughout. Nothing super huge, but they all made some character development and it was really fun. I really enjoyed it. I think I rated it a 4.25 star. It was a fun time. I don't know if they're gonna have another book in the series, but if they would, I would enjoy reading it. There was not like any romantic elements to it. It's definitely just like a general fiction, but there was definitely some like love between the characters, which is really nice to see because that's something that I definitely believe in that like, if you get to know someone that you can really love them for who they are. And you definitely saw that in this book. The next book I read was Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones, which is an older book. I think it's from, from the eighties, but it's a middle grade novel and it, was well written, but it didn't quite hit for me. And I don't know if that's because I am older than middle grade, because a lot of people say this is like their favorite book. This book is about a wizard, Howell. He has a moving castle in this village. And this girl like has heard about him. Um, you know, they they feel wary of him because they've heard bad things about him. And she gets turned into an old lady by a wicked witch that comes to that town. And so she's like, I don't know what to do. So she decides to go to Howell's moving castle to like get help from the wizard. And so that kind of starts the story, just the story of like how they get to know each other and like the little like ups and downs that they go through, like the different characters. And there's, you know, like a battle at the end between the wizard and the evil witch and whatnot. There's a couple other books in the series. I might read them, I'm not sure. But I think what really I didn't like was I didn't really like Howell. He annoyed me, like in a big way. He was a brat, he was entitled, he was like not fun. And so I think that's the thing that I was bothered by the most. I liked how distinct the characterization was. I think the book was really well written. I think I rated it like a 3.75 star, but it just like wasn't quite it for me. It was a good book though. So I would recommend it. I don't know, maybe it just wasn't the right audience for it. Yeah, 
I don't know, maybe if I'd read it when I was younger. I also, though, I really want to watch the movie that's like Studio Ghibli style. I'm not sure if Studio Ghibli actually made it, but there is a Howl's Moving Castle movie, and so I do want to see that. I think that would be really fun. They took some liberties with the movie, from what I've heard, but not too many, and I think it'd be really fun. The next book that I finished was a physical copy, and this is When in Rome by Sarah Adams, and this is a closed-door romance about a pop star who is burnt out, needs a break in the couple weeks before her tour starts. She drives to Rome, Kentucky, and her car breaks down in this guy's front lawn. <laughs> and it's definitely like a grumpy sunshine kind of dynamic, but I really loved how throughout the book you really saw him open up and you saw more of what he was, not just on the outside, so that was really nice. I loved the character development and getting to learn more about these characters. It was a super slow burn. Oh, it was so tantalizing. Like I said, it's a closed door romance and I really, really loved it. I think I rated it like a 4.5 star because it got a little cheesy at the end, but I did really like it. And I definitely want to read more from her. I grabbed the next book that's in like this companion novel series that's called Practice Makes Perfect. And that involves his younger sister. So I have that book too. I also like, it's on the shorter side as far as books go. It's like about 300 pages. So it's a little bit shorter than other romance novels that I've read recently. So it was a nice quick read and I loved it. The next book that I finished was actually a graphic novel and I've not read any graphic novels before. This is called Demon in the Wood. It is a Shadow and Bone graphic novel. It's like the prequel to Shadow and Bone which I had not read before, though I have started Shadow and Bone, the first book. And this was really interesting and it really intrigued me and made me want to start reading Shadow and Bone. It's like the origin story behind the Darkling and like his experience growing up. And I think it's meant to foster some compassion for him. Though I haven't read very far into Shadow and Bone yet, so I'm not sure why he needs that compassion or not. Hmm, we shall see. But yeah, it was a really quick read. I read it in just a couple hours on my night shift, like in between doing other things. And yeah, it was a really fun read. I want to find more graphic novels because it was just so fun to read something so quick. And with pictures, it was just like a fun little story. Oh, and that's by Leo Bardugo, who is the author of Shadow and Bone. And it also credits Danny Pendergast, who I think is a graphic novelist. The next book I read, five stars. So good. Daisy Jones and the Six. Read it on audiobook. It has a full cast. It was so, so good. It's a historical fiction about a made up band called Daisy Jones and the Six, how they came together and how they fell apart in the middle of their first tour together. And it was fascinating. It was so intriguing. I love hearing about all the characters and you know, there were things I loved and hated about like almost every character. And it was, awesome. I loved it. And I, I've i listened to Taylor Jenkins read books in the past. I've listened to Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and I really liked that one too. And so I think she's just a really good author for me that I really enjoy her things. She writes in such a way that it feels real. Even though you know it's a historical fiction and none of these people existed, like you have a hard time believing that because she just writes it so, so well. The next book I finished was on my Kindle, and this one has been languishing since like January. This is Princess Academy, The Forgotten Sisters by Shannon Hale. And this was the third book in the Princess Academy series. I recently learned that it wasn't just a standalone book because I'd read the first book, but there are three books. And so I had purchased them at the end of last year, reread the first one, read the second one for the first time, and I started the third one. I read like two chapters and I hated it. <laughs> I hated the premise. Basically, Miri was well known for her like academics. After doing this Princess Academy, she had studied some more. The queen wanted her to go travel into the middle of nowhere swamp to go teach the cousins of the prince how to be princesses so that they could be eligible to marry a neighboring king to kind of forge a better relationship with that other kingdom because they were kind of on the brink of war and so they thought that that might kind of pace things up a little bit. But like, why would you 
tell like a 16 or 17 year old girl that that's like her responsibility like that that's what bothered me I was like she should not be going here alone to do this like that's not on her so I put it down for like six or seven months because it just made me angry but I really wanted to read a different book on my kindle the shadow and bone book I have the trilogy on my Kindle and I don't like switching back and forth between books on my Kindle because it's just like not the best interface and so I really wanted to just like finish one book move to another so I just pounded through and I finished it it definitely got better after like maybe the 40% mark I enjoyed it a lot more the first almost half was definitely a slog for me because I hated the premise I think but the nature of the story I like didn't know what was happening I like could not anticipate like what would happen next because as far as like the plot it kept taking twist after turn and so it kept me hooked because I didn't want to put it down. It is a middle grade novel but I definitely liked it a lot more than the other middle grade novel I read this past month. I don't know I think that the first book in the series is still my favorite but I did like the second one better than the third one too so kind of a downhill <laughs> unfortunately but I still liked it okay I think I rated it like three and a half to four stars I can't remember not a favorite but still pretty good once I finally got over the hump of like hating the beginning the next book I read audiobook was Finley Donovan Jumps the Gun by Elle Cosimano and if you've listened to my podcast before I've read a couple other books by her in this series the Finley Donovan series and Finley Donovan just like irritates me with her incompetence and the choices that she makes but this book was my favorite because a lot of the choices that she made or that she was faced with were forced on her by external forces. And so I liked that view better because it wasn't her fault that she had to make these crappy decisions. <laughs> she was really stuck when, you know, mob bosses are know where she lives and like know her family and could do a lot of damage to her. But she's kind of stuck into doing what they want her to do, even if she doesn't want to do it. So. I really liked that. This one was a little weird in that she like went away to like a police citizens academy. She was using that to try to figure out like who in the police force was like a double agent was feeding information to this mob boss. So it was really interesting. I rated it a four star. It was my favorite of the group because Finley didn't annoy me as much as she normally does. It's a fun time. It's a fun read. Lots of crazy stuff happens. It's just like a silly cozy mystery. So if you like that kind of thing. But sometimes incompetent people bother me in books. <laughs> the next book I read was The X-Hex by Erin Sterling. I am in the mood for some spooky things. I'm in the mood for Halloween, for fall, all that stuff. And so I thought this would be the great start to the Halloween season. And it totally was. I rated it a four star, 4.25 star. I really liked it. This is like a romance with a witchy background. So a lot of the terminology, a lot of the things that the characters did were like witchy inspired and so that was really interesting for me someone who doesn't have that background to like be learning about these words and like I feel like the author did a really good job for someone who doesn't have that background in like making it an immersive experience there's this witch family it starts out with this girl who is heartbroken she broke up with her boyfriend because she finds out he's betrothed to someone else and he was gonna break it off but she felt violated that he didn't tell her before they started dating that he was betrothed to someone else and didn't like take care of it then so she broke up with him she was heartbroken she like is drunk and she and her cousin do like a silly curse on him and apparently you find out that the curse was real at least part of the curse was real that like actually accessed magic and wasn't just like saying silly things and so you find out like when he comes back to town like 10 years later ways that he is cursed and they like try to solve the curse it was a really fun book i really like the atmosphere i really like the characters and it wasn't so much of a slow burn definitely spicy and it was really fun to read they have another book in the series about the cousin I think and the premise is not as interesting to me we'll see how that goes but I'll probably pick that up on audiobook pretty soon here too and listen to that yeah I really enjoyed it more than I thought I would definitely a little bit cheesy definitely some things I didn't love but overall I really really liked the book oh my gosh I read so many books <laughs> I have a huge list okay the next book I read was 
as old as time by Liz Braswell. And I don't know if you've seen these, but they're like twisted Disney tales. And they've got like a dozen or so of these books. They have a ton of them, but it's basically like, what if this thing was different in the traditional Disney story that we hear? And I've seen these books. I finally was able to get one on audiobook. It hadn't been released yet, at least at my library. And so I finally got it on audiobook. And so I was able to listen to it because I really wanted to check it out. I thought I might really like the series. I don't think so. I, I picked the Beauty and the Beast one because that's one of my favorite Disney stories. And it was rated the highest on Storygraph, which is the book site that I use. I don't use Goodreads. I use Storygraph to like chart all my books that I read and make my TBR and whatnot. And so it had the highest reviews of all the books in the series. And so I was like, that sounds like a good bet. Also one of my favorite stories. And it like was way too long. It didn't add a lot to the story. It just kind of took a little bit of an alternate ending. I was really hoping it would give more, more depth to the characters and it really didn't do that. I think I read it like a 2.5 or like a 2.75 on the side of like, I didn't really enjoy it. Like I kind of wish I hadn't read it, but now that I've read it, I know I don't really want to read any of the other ones. But if you like a really simple story, if you like retellings for the Disney stories, you might enjoy this book. But for me, it like didn't give enough of a retelling to make it different. It really felt too close to the original, which is like veering off course a little bit. There was also some trigger warnings with like torture and stuff. So that was like not expected. Not exactly what I was looking for, I guess, in like a retelling of Beauty and the Beast, but it might be what you're looking for. The next book I read was Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. And this is a nice cozy fantasy set in like 1909 or something, where basically it's a, it's a low fantasy set in our world but this Emily Wilde is a professor of dryadology like a fairy things basically and so she is traveling to like another Slavic country that's made up to finish her encyclopedia of fairies and research this one last group of like hidden ones I think is what it's called of uh, fairies that people don't have a lot of information about. This is written in a really interesting voice. This is her field journal. So it's in her first person voice for the most of the book. And it's scholarly and academic and has like a couple footnotes and stuff too. But it also includes like, it's her diary too. So it's like her day-to-day -day things, interacting with people. It was really interesting. I was so intrigued. Every time I picked up this book, like it gave me a lot of questions, a lot of intrigue. I really wanted to know what was going on. I wanted to learn more about this world and about these fairies because there was just so much to learn. But whenever I put it down, I didn't necessarily feel compelled to pick it back up because there wasn't like an overarching plot throughout. It was really just her experience in this other country. And there were lots of subplots that would wrap up after a few chapters, like after like 20 or 30 pages. And so if I got in one of those subplots, then I would I have to finish because it was so interesting. But like, other than that, it would be like, okay, I finished this little storyline. I can put it down. I'll come back to it another day, read another 30 pages or so, you know? So I really, really liked it. It was definitely slow. It was cozy. I love the vibes. I love the voice. I think I rated it like a 4.5 star. I think this was a really, really good book. So if you like books like Legends and Lattes, I think you would enjoy this book. This is more of a low fantasy. And so it's her journey in this country. And she also has a coworker, Bambleby. Yeah, she has a coworker, Wendell Bambleby, that also comes to visit unannounced, <laughs> that will interact with her too in this setting. And so it's really interesting. Lots of different fairies, really cool information related to those fairies and stuff. So I would love to learn more about this world. There is another book coming out soon. I think at the end of this year or beginning of next, I will definitely be purchasing it. And then I really needed a quick read and I wanted like a palate cleanser. So I read All Systems Read by Martha Wells. This is the first Murderbot book and it's only like 140 pages or so, 149 pages, super quick read. I read it in a day, just like amidst all my other things that I had going on. I pick it up, put it down, you know, throughout chores and whatnot. I loved it, five stars. If you like Becky Chambers' novels, I think you would enjoy this. It is a sci-fi 
but it's from the perspective of this murder bot who's like basically acting as security for a company on a planet while there's some surveyors that are like scientists that are like getting information on the planet so like soil samples and like classifying fauna and flora and whatnot anyway so murderbot is here this is like murderbot's account so you get to see inside murderbot's head and they are socially awkward they don't like people and yet they like care for people in a way they don't want people to know about and so it was just very relatable very funny also some hard sci-fi it was like definitely a different world lots of different information it was an encapsulated story so there's like maybe seven in the series but like it's all included in here so there's no like massive cliffhanger it's all in one and I really really enjoyed it it was exactly what I needed the next day I went to the bookstore and I bought the next five because that's what my bookstore had in stock because <laughs> I just feel like they'll be a perfect palette cleanser so fun all the good things to read I really enjoyed it and so really happy about this one. And then the last book that I finished this past month was called I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. I rated this I think a 3.75. It's kind of hard to rate memoirs because it is someone's life experience but I feel good about that rating. She shares not as much about her child actor life but more about her life as a child with her narcissistic mother and how that impacted the rest of her life and her decisions. Lots of trigger warnings, so definitely check it out. Um, I'll throw a bunch on the screen here if you wanna see, but like lots of adult content, lots of mental health issues, lots of struggles. Like you kind of assume that everyone in Hollywood is messed up at least a little. She was really messed up because of her childhood. I don't know, I appreciate her story and it's very valid of her to be sharing it because it is a very vulnerable story to share and she was very vulnerable in sharing it. Some of the things that she shared didn't seem very pertinent, but also I feel like this book was written at the very beginning of her recovery, but I would have loved a lot more introspection, a lot more reflection about the impact her mom had on her life. And I don't think she's there yet. I would have loved if she had waited a few years before writing this book so I could get more of that depth. The very end of the book was really, really good and it was giving me that, but it just ended too quickly and I wanted more of that. Uh, the writing isn't anything super amazing. I did listen to the audiobook and I really enjoyed listening it through her voice and her story. I kind of liked how at the beginning of the book it was written very simply like it was her kid self writing it. And then her voice got older as time went on, but it was still pretty basic, even towards the end of the book. I think a lot more reflection would have helped give it a little bit more maturity. And I just don't think she's quite there with her recovery because she's been through a lot. So yeah, I think it's worth a read if the trigger warnings don't put you off from reading it. But I don't think it's like an amazing memoir that's like life changing. Most of the book, I was just going like, what in the world? Like, but my feelings didn't go any deeper than that. I've read other memoirs that are more interesting to me, that are more relatable to me, or that have a lot more depth that like really give me things to think about. And it didn't give me too much to think about other than like, I can't believe she went through all that, which is worth reading about, I think. So that's the last book I finished. So I already mentioned books that I'm reading. I'm reading Shadow and Bone. I'm kind of towards the beginning. I'm only like 10% of the way in, but that is a young adult fantasy novel by Leah Bardugo that takes place in the Grishaverse. And I don't really know too much more about it, but I'm really enjoying it so far. And that's on my Kindle. I've got the trilogy on my Kindle. And then I am also reading The Serpent and the Wings of Night. So this is Vampire Hunger Games basically. I am only like 30 pages in and this is quite a long book. It's a hefty boy. So I don't think it'll take too long to read. A lot of people have told me that this is like good for the book hangover you get after reading Fourth Wing <laughs> and I read Fourth Wing in three days. So I'm hoping that I will read this pretty quick too because this is my friend's book so I can get this to her. And the second book is also been released recently so I can dive right into the second book if I really enjoyed this one. So we'll see. It's definitely a high fantasy in like this completely different world. I'm still trying to figure out and like orient myself in it because I'm still pretty near the beginning, but we'll see how much more I can read soon and we'll see if I finish it this next month. I think I will. I've been reading a lot recently. Oh my goodness. 
This will be the longest podcast in the history of podcasts. I am so sorry, but I'm so grateful that you are here. And I don't care how many times you had to sit down and watch a little bit in order to finish this. But if you're here, definitely comment down below. Let me know because I love, because I love having you here and getting to share the things that I'm working on, whether it's crafting or reading as well. And just catching up with you a little bit. Definitely let me know if you feel like I should start a book YouTube channel or if you feel like I should create separate book videos on here or whether that's not something you're interested in and I should just keep it at the end of my podcast like I've been doing. Let me know so I can make this channel a better fit for you. And until next time, happy making. Bye!